Hello friends, this is Carrie and welcome back to I Like Reddit channel. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Today we have three fantastic stories out of the Entitled Parents subreddit. Let's begin. Our first story is called EM Tells Kid to Climb Tree, Kid Was Just Expressly Forbidden to Climb, Then Karma Hits. Not nearly as bad as some of the stories I've read on here, but even so, this experience from yesterday features one of the most entitled parents I've ever encountered in the wild. In the city where I live, there's a botanical garden. It's private property, but most of it is accessible to the public for free. In the middle of the garden, there's a small cafe. And yesterday, my girlfriend, our daughter, and I met for coffee there with another couple and their daughter. Right next to our table, outdoors, there was a small tree that had a bunch of children, approximately four to eight years old, were climbing in it. We'd been there for half an hour, when a gardener, it was evidenced by the clothes he was wearing that he worked in the garden, not really sure in what respect though, came by and told the kids politely but firmly that they were not allowed to climb in the trees in the garden. The trees are from all over the world and most of them don't grow here naturally, so I imagine it would be quite expensive to replace one should it get damaged. The kids didn't seem upset about it and ran back to their respective parents. They did not all belong to the same family slash party of visitors. Two girls, around the age of four, ran back to their mother, sitting about 60 feet away, sipping wine, and the gardener went back to his business. About 10 minutes later, one of the mothers approaches our table with a sour look on her face and the girls in tow, and the following dialogue ensues. EM. Are you the ones who told my daughter she couldn't climb in this tree? Me. No, it was some guy who works here. EM. Her tone a bit softer now that she realizes none of us told off her daughter. Ow, oh, I see. Well, did you see where he went? Me. No, I'm afraid not. EM turns to the two girls. If you want to climb here, that's fine. If they didn't want children climbing trees, they should have had a playground. She then returns to her wine. Me and my company were a bit baffled, but didn't intervene as frankly, none of us were in the mood to come between a Karen and whatever her precious kid deserved. But just five minutes later, one of the girls fell out of the tree and hit the ground face first with a good thud. We asked her if she was all right, but before we could finish the question, she started wailing as if her head had split open. Luckily, she didn't fall from very high up and was probably more startled than hurt. But even so, that's some karma if I ever saw any. If you've been watching until here and you are enjoying the content so far, please drop a heart emoji in the comments section below. Our next story is by The Booksmith, entitled Father Nearly Burns Down the House. So normally I try and keep these lighthearted, but this only just happened last night, and because of it, I've gotten very little sleep, so I may or may not get into more of a rant in some places. Apologies. For context, my father is a dialysis patient with double kidney failure and can barely see due to his diabetes and barely listens to his doctor. He is also one of the most entitled people I know. For proof of this, I have two more stories on this sub, one where he demands I give up one of my $300 bikes to him, and the other where we go shopping and my father doesn't understand what closing means. So flashback to 3 a.m. I'm asleep in my room and suddenly my cat comes sprinting into the room and knocks a ton of things over, causing me to wake up. Immediately I smell smoke and I'm very confused, but I don't panic yet. Unsurprisingly, my father has burnt food at 3 a.m. before, so I just assume that's what happened and that he took care of it. Not this time. Apparently because I sit up and immediately the smoke in the house is obvious. While it isn't so thick that you can't see, it's definitely thick enough to know something is very wrong. I rush out into the kitchen and sure enough, I see a saucepan bellowing smoke like a freaking smokestack. I immediately shut off the burner and turn on the stove fan. Looking into the kitchen and living room, which is right next to each other, is something I can only describe as looking through the cliche smoke haze in a stoner house multiplied by five. I immediately wake my father up, yelling about how he left a freaking pan on the burner. I then started opening the windows. All of them were shut since it was below 60 where I live. My father immediately starts cursing, and when I ask him if he's going to help me air out the house, 
He says he doesn't feel well and I need to do it myself. He then gets up and goes to the bathroom, which meant I was down one exhaust fan. This freaking idiot almost burns down the house and then immediately refuses to help. My conversation with my dad was enough to wake my mother and she runs out of her room panicking because of the smoke in the air. I explain the situation and she starts yelling at my father who claims it wasn't his fault because he had meant to come back to the soup. He just fell asleep by accident. As these two are having an argument, I start busting out our window fans and turning them to face outward to get the smoke out of the house. My mom eventually starts to help and all the arguing has woken up my brother who was asleep and didn't notice the smoke since his door was shut with the massive window in there wide open. He loves sleeping in the cold. At this point, we're all angry and my brother works first shift so he gets to miss out on an hour of sleep, basically. While this is going on, my father is still in the bathroom refusing to help anyone because he is a POS and the five cats are freaking the hell out. So we're trying to get all of these windows open and fans in the house while the cats are sprinting between potential exits, all while my father gets to hide from his mistakes. We get all the fans blowing. Me and my mom sit down in the living room too awake and both of us with headaches from the smoke. Now if at this point in the story you were wondering why the smoke detectors didn't go off, potentially saving us from having to do all of this, well don't worry my father has the answer. You see we were wondering the same thing. Our smoke detectors are wired into the house's electrical with battery backups in case of a power outage. So there's no way that they should not have been working. So I twist one of them off the wall and notice that the detector has been switched off. Assuming this was the case for both my mother and I, I go back and forth discussing why they were shut off. Then my father comes out and says in a voice so matter of fact that it was almost like he wasn't just responsible for nearly burning down the house less than 30 minutes ago. I actually shut them off last time I made steak in the skillet because the smoke kept causing them to go off. So this idiot actually shut off the smoke detectors and didn't turn them back on when he was done. This idiot nearly started a fire in our trailer. I don't know what you may know about trailers, but they're built out of super flammable and cheap materials. So a fire in a trailer is like lighting an effing firecracker. So you see, usually what my dad does is at least funny in hindsight, but he literally almost killed us. If not from the fire risk, then from the potential smoke inhalation, literally sitting there like an effing child doing nothing. Honestly, I'm still angry because I couldn't sleep for hours and the house still smells like smoke. Dang. Anyways, thanks for reading. Quick edit. No, putting my father in a home isn't an option. We don't have the money to and he isn't mentally stable, so there's no forcing him. My mother won't kick him out because she feels bad because of his health. Our final story is by Vampire Cappuccino. My grandmother defended my sexual predator cousin. Hello strangers. I've been a long time lurker and decided to add my story about my grandmother, or at least one of them. My grandmother is a complete narcissist who is perfectly described to be a mixture between Professor Umbridge and a Dementor. She has the same toad-like appearance and personality as Umbridge, and also sours the mood, literally makes you feel like you'll never be happy again like a Dementor. While my family never collectively agrees upon anything, we all do agree that my grandmother is a witch and we never want to see her again. Needless to say, I have tons of stories about her. But today I'll tell you the story of her favoritism and why my family never talks to my extended family. Most of it is paraphrased as it was years ago and frankly I'm too disgusted to think back to all that was said to me by my own grandmother. Backstory. I've always been well endowed and needed to wear a bra younger than most girls, though I've never noticed. Apparently some people, like my cousin Joffrey, did. So back in 2012, we had Joffrey and his father come over to my house to celebrate Christmas. I was 12 at the time and he was 14. A couple of nights before Christmas, I went upstairs to head to bed, as you do, and sometime later, before I could fall asleep, I heard a knock at the door. Thinking it was my dad or one of my siblings wanting to annoy me, I said, come in. Joffrey stepped in, closed the door behind him, and walked up to my bed, seeming almost awkward. What? I asked him, clearly confused. Well, I wanted you to show me your breasts he said, looking at me. I was clearly creeped the hell out and weirded out 
that this was my cousin. Not only that, he was my only cousin related to me by blood. My other cousins were married into the family. Uh, no. Come on, please. No, just watch a movie or something. If you show me your breasts, I'll show you my penis. You haven't seen one before, right? Beyond disgusted, I grabbed a book from my bookshelf next to me and threw it at him. Joffrey left, and I immediately left as well, yelling for my dad. I quickly told my dad, who was obviously beyond furious. He told me recently that if it wasn't for my uncle being there, he would have grabbed Joffrey by the testicles and dragged him down the stairs and kicked him out the door. After that, my dad and I cut contact with their family. This enraged my grandma. You see, while my grandma has favorites from each of the siblings of my family, my dad and his brother, cousins, my siblings and I, Joffrey was her ultimate favorite. She treated him like the second coming of Jesus. Whatever he likes, she likes. And she tries to get my brother and I to like, but always to no avail. She always tries to get my younger sibling, Gappy, to copy him, though it always fails. She tries to get us to join her when she went to see Joffrey graduate, though she only got my siblings. I refused to go. My dad refused to let me go. My grandmother seemed happy as the youngest of us, her favorites of our trio, went. A couple of years passed and everything seemed all right. We didn't really hear much from my grandmother apart from her sending us cards, which we always threw away after checking for money. However, everything changed once she attacked. And by attack, I mean she took my dad to court. I'm not going to tell you the story of, of this debacle here, Though, if enough people are interested, I can give you the entire post. Anyway, thanks to her winning the case, my siblings and I had to visit her once a month for a weekend to a city that was an hour and a half away. She had to drive us there and back and thank God for headphones, otherwise I might have gone crazy from dealing with her for that long. That was so freaking awful for all of us. It got to the point where all of our grades were slipping because of the stress of having to deal with this witch. Anyway, one of the weekends, she made a passing comment about Joffrey. When we came back home, I told my dad, and the next time she came to pick us up, my dad asked her kindly not to talk about him. She agreed, but what does she go and do? Joffrey's name came up non-freaking-stop. When a song came on, she would be like, Oh, this sounds just like Joffrey. Or whenever we would do something entirely boring, oh, Joffrey would love this. It took everything in my being not to punch this stupid hag. I could tell my brother felt the same, though it was probably because they just hated her. She did this for a couple of weekends and I can handle it, but nothing could compare to one weekend where she asked me to speak to her. She brought me to her room, sat me across from her and began to speak. She started with pleasantries before going for the throat. Quick note, my grandma tends to basically interrogate us, especially during a case like this one she's basically having with my dad at this time. She just wanted to get as much ammo to use against him. She asked about my mother, who I haven't seen in years, and she and my dad divorced and currently lives across the country. After smack talking about my dad and calling him a terrible father, which really made me want to punch her, I managed to keep my cool, especially when she got to the topic of Joffrey. She tried to set up plans for me to see him again and be friendly again because you shouldn't treat him like a monster. It was just a dumb mistake. You need to forgive him. Hearing her actually defend his freaking actions towards me and actually try and get me to defend him made me disgusted. I wish I could have told her off or said something snarky or anything, but I just stood there like an idiot, unable to say anything. I honestly don't remember what else she said, but I knew I was just angry and just wanted to go back home. Unfortunately, I had another night there. We eventually won the case and thanks to a dumb mistake on her part, hadn't seen her in years. But now she's arrived back in our lives, which made me decide to add this. Sorry if this sounds ranty. I always start ranting when the topic of her comes up. Thanks for listening, strangers. TLDR. My evil grandmother defends my cousin after he sexually harassed me on Christmas. Edit. Some grammar. Also, this was written by my sister. She asked me to post this because she couldn't. That's all the stories I have for today. I'd like to give a big thank you to the OPs for sharing their stories to the Entitled Parents subreddit. Links to their original stories will be in the description box below. Please stop on by Reddit to show them some love and an upvote. If you enjoy the content on this channel, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification to let you know when I've uploaded new videos. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.